Hi, I'm John Rampton with Search Engine Journal, here with Chris Goward from Wider Funnel. Right. How's How it going? Great. Good to be here. Hey, now you spoke uh, three times, correct? Yeah. On uh, optimization, landing page, A-B testing. Right. Also, you just barely put out a new book. I did. Uh, what's, what's your book called? It's called You Should Test That, actually. I have a copy here. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You Should Test That. You Should Test That. It's all about how to get uh, insights from testing on your websites and landing pages. And it goes through the whole strategy frameworks and 15 case studies on how we do that. Oh, nice. So, so what are companies doing wrong? You know what we're finding is that a lot of companies are taking, there's a few things. They're taking these so-called best practices that they're finding on blog posts about what your landing pages should look like, and yeah. they're just applying it to their websites without testing. And what we're finding is there's a lot of very different target audiences that respond differently to different tactics. Yeah. So what's one of the big mistakes that you've seen like in the past week? Well, like almost every website, 90% of the Fortune 500 has these rotating homepage carousels. Yeah. And I they, hate carousels. And they kill conversions. Yeah. Every time we test them, they lose. Uh, other things, put, people putting the uh, security symbols too prominently on e-commerce websites. Yep. Sometimes they can actually hurt sales. Wow. Uh, putting a lot of these uh, so-called best practices, smiling, beautiful women on a landing page yep. or whatever, hurt sales, doesn't actually reinforce the, the product message. Now, do you think this has changed from, because I've tested landing page back in like 2008 versus now, do you think it's that used to be a best practice and we've changed the way we interact with websites? Do you think... Well, I for mean, certain target audiences, it still works. Okay. So for certain products, like we, we'll test in, uh, you know, uh, nutraceuticals and sort of some of these single, single product medical things, yeah, and it yeah. works like great the perfect amount of cleavage does it's, does it's right. awesome yeah yeah okay but in a lot of cases it doesn't work so what are other mistakes that you're finding people just making that are just stupid and they you know, want to slap somebody the biggest thing right now is the five-year website redesign cycle the epic redesign where they're mm -hmm. throwing the design out and re starting something fresh because yep. the CEO doesn't like it. They think they're tired, right? Yeah. And what we're finding is new websites, the successful ones, are using a different process. It's evolutionary site redesign through testing. And okay. that's what we're doing with our clients right now is that we're testing all of the site-wide elements, the templates, the navigation, and over time, evolving it based on what customers actually respond to and what they yeah. buy more because of, okay. rather than just throwing it out. Because how many times have you heard of website redesigns where they flip the switch to the new site and conversion rate drops, yep. right? Revenue drops, and they've spent $100,000 on this thing, and it's a piece of crap. Yep. So, so I'm, I'm getting a brand new website redesigned on my site right now. What should I be focused on? I'm very women-centric. What, what would be one tip for you? We've, we've done changes, we've made this. What would be one big mistake that I should not make? Well, I, I think in terms of these, you know, again, best practices are always difficult to talk about in yeah. general terms. Yeah. But a lot of times what people are doing that are uh, mistakes are, are looking for the shiny objects that a lot of people are doing, like video being prominent, uh, animated things on the page putting their content too low on the page. You know, a lot of yep. these HTML5 things where all the content is like a mile down. Yep. All these things, you know, are fancy and they're fun, but they don't work. Yep. Um, so focus on what's your message and, and really what's the clearest way to communicate that value proposition really succinctly, clearly with, with you know, the most impact. And that'll get the best results rather yep. than looking for these, you know, shiny objects. Yeah. Now, question on content on the main page. Would you have dynamic content that changes all the time like your latest blog post or would you say put static content on there and tell them to go to the blog for more information well i guess it depends on the business if it's a if it's a publishing business then you want to have oh yeah publishing publishing business yeah. of course you want to have the latest on there but your average company yeah selling a product selling a product nothing changes very much you want to answer the question what's in it for your customer Wific. What's in it for your customer? Answer that Wific. question. Wific. I like yeah. that. Wific. What's in it for your customer? I made that up yesterday. So. Perfect. I like it. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, communicate that clearly. They don't care about your latest blog post as much as how can I solve the need? Why am I here on your website? I'm here to solve something for me. I don't care about you, right? Yeah. So how can you communicate most quickly what you offer and how it's relevant to them? Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Again, John Rampton, Search Engine Journal, here with Chris Goward.